to this issue and allow us to proceed to other amendments on the treaty. Uh, Mr. President, I yield the floor. Mr. President. S Senator from New Hampshire. Mr. President, I'm here today to express my strong support for repeal of the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy. We took a significant step toward that repeal earlier today. And I want to congratulate and thank Senators Lieberman and Collins for their strong bipartisan leadership on this issue. I was proud to be a co-sponsor of this bill, and I hope we will very soon send it to the President for his signature. As a number of my colleagues have already said today, it's not often that the Senate gets this kind of an opportunity with a single vote to right a wrong. But we have that opportunity here today. This vote that we're going to be taking this afternoon is an historic vote. It is one for which the Senate will be remembered for a very long time. This is our opportunity to fix an outdated, discriminatory, and broken policy, and to strengthen America's security. The United States, our military, and our security will be better off because of this legislation. Now, I completely agree with Defense Secretary Robert Gates, who strongly endorsed the repeal and urged the Senate to pass this legislation before the end of the year. Secretary Gates and America's military leadership understand that this discriminatory policy undermines our national security and diminishes our military readiness. A nation is at war is a nation that needs the best, most qualified service members we can find, regardless of sexual orientation. At a time when nearly 150,000 American men and women are serving in combat overseas, and at a time when our military is stretched thin across the globe, we simply cannot afford to lose some of our finest soldiers. Since the policy was instituted in 1993, Don't Ask, Don't Tell has meant that more than 14,000 service members have been expelled from the military with an estimated 4,000 members per year leave voluntarily because of this discriminatory policy. And 1,000 of those who've been expelled were badly needed specialists with vital mission critical skills like Arabic speakers and other technical experts. Don't Ask, Don't Tell also ignores the realities of today's combat environment where American soldiers are fighting next to allied troops from around the world. At least 28 countries, including our closest allies, Great Britain, Australia, Canada, and Israel, already allow open service. Not only is this policy costing us critical capabilities, it's also unnecessarily costing us a lot of money. <clears throat> The military spends as much as $43,000 to replace each individual charged under the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy. And at a time of extremely tight budgets with little money to go around, it just doesn't make sense to spend tens of thousands of dollars to investigate, try, and replace American soldiers based only on their sexual orientation. Repeal of this policy has earned the backing of an overwhelming majority of America's Iraq and Afghanistan veterans and countless military leaders, including retired General Colin Powell, who says that attitudes and circumstances have changed since the policy was first instituted 17 years ago. We also now have a good understanding of what our own military men and women feel about repeal of this policy. The military undertook one of the largest and most comprehensive reviews in its history to make sure that those affected by this change had their views heard and incorporated into potential action. The in-depth nine-month review included a comprehensive survey that was sent to nearly 400,000 active duty and reserve component service members as well as 150,000 military spouses. And the review's final report, released several weeks ago, found that repealing this policy could be accomplished without undermining military readiness, 
and that it could be initiated immediately. The report found that more than two-thirds of those questioned found that repeal would have no effect on cohesion, effectiveness, unit readiness, or morale. Mr. President, we used to say to young Americans, don't ask what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Now, we tell those very young people who want to serve this country, don't ask, don't tell. This is a civil rights issue. It's a moral issue, and it is a national security issue. And today, the Senate has an historic opportunity to fix this broken and outdated policy. And I look forward to voting with the majority of my colleagues in support of changing Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield. Mr. Forward. President. Senator Ohio. Um, thank you, Mr. President. I, I rise to um, echo the words of